Oh yeah, make sure it's recording. Yep. Yep. There we go. We're now recording. And I have nine oh three. So shall we get this party started? We got some. Yeah. Let's. Uh, let me just mute everyone really quick besides us. Um, okay. Yeah. Let's get started. All right. Well, good morning and happy Friday, everyone. Uh, thanks for being with us today. Uh, we are going to talk about marketing, specifically uh, digital marketing and five lead generation tactics using social media and Google. And uh, what a great time to uh, really kind of focus in on marketing. I mean, it's always a good time to talk about marketing, but especially now because we're going into the new year, we want to make sure that we're going in with a plan and with some new ideas to get more customers, generate sales and all that good stuff. All right, so let's look at our agenda for today. We're gonna to be together till about 10 o'clock this morning. We're gonna start off with some brief introductions. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the marketing mindset and uh, strategies to employ. Then we'll get into, uh, Alan specifically, we'll get into the lead generation tactics. And then of course, we'll, we'll do some Q&A and the Q&A, um, yeah, we'll probably reserve them uh, towards the end. But if you have a question along the way, use the chat feature. I think everybody's kind of a, a Zoom expert by now. So uh, use the chat feature to ask us questions and then we'll read them all at the end. And then of course, uh, we'll talk about some next steps that you can take in order to get your marketing going. All right, so the dynamic duo, uh, I am Juan Ortega. I'm a partner with Smarty Pants Marketing. You may also know me uh, through Action Coach. I'm a franchise owner that still occupies the majority of my time. And when I'm not uh, fighting crime and, and helping businesses through Action Coach, I'm helping businesses through marketing. So uh, it's, it's kind of one in the same, but not really. So a little bit about me, my background here is grew up in Orlando, Florida, spent 20 years in the hospitality industry, starting from uh, front desk. And 20 years later, I was the director of marketing uh, for several luxury hotel companies, including Weston and uh, uh, let's see, Hilton. And the last company that I worked for was Ritz Carlton. Then in 2012, I had a early midlife crisis, decided I wanted to get out after 20 years and I wanted to do something, but wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And uh, luckily I had read a book recently that really I, I kind of credit that book to changing my life. And if you haven't read this book, The E-Myth by Michael Gerber, I highly recommend it. It's a great book for business owners, great book for uh, employees. And essentially it, you know, it changed my life because in the book, Michael Gerber calls himself a business coach. And at the time in 2011, when I read it, didn't even know what a business coach was. And uh, it was fantastic because when that midlife crisis hit in 2012, uh, that book sort of came to mind and I said, that's what I want to do. And so shortly thereafter, about six months after I quit my executive position with Ritz Carlton, bought the franchise and uh, the rest is history. Kind of the most exciting thing I ever did, the scariest thing I ever did all uh, in the same time. All right, so Smarty Pants has been around for over two years now. Uh, I met Alan and uh, realized that the two of us working together uh, would make a good team. We, we come from different backgrounds and brought different uh, strengths uh, to the company. And, you know, essentially, uh, one of the things that I had noticed by being a business coach is that all business owners essentially share the same challenge. They all you know, kind of went to school for something else. They're all great at their trade. They all enjoy doing what they do. But most business owners didn't go to either uh, business school or marketing school. And so marketing was kind of like this necessary evil, this thing that kind of needs to happen, but you never have time to do it. And, you know, I got essentially tired of telling my clients to go and find a marketing company. And so that's why I said, you know, I should start my own, or at least I should be a partner in one. And the reason that business owners can't get to marketing most of the time is because they have a lack of time because they're busy, stuck in the operations part of their business. Maybe they, there's a lack of knowledge or skills, lack of patience, maybe a lack of desire to learn social media, search engine optimization, geofencing, and all, you know, meta tags and all this technical stuff. Um, I know that for me, all of those were true at some point or another. And, and the reality is that as a business coach, you know, one of the things that I teach my clients all the time is to delegate, to, to hire people that know more about 
whatever it is than you do and get them to do it so that you can stick to the high level stuff. So you can stick to running the business, but not necessarily, you know, building websites and optimizing them and so forth. And so what we found when we did a uh, market research is that there's a lot of marketing companies out there. I mean, you can hire, you know, a, a teenager from India to do stuff for you, but usually low cost, you know, equals doesn't work. Um, or you can go to some of the big local companies and it'll work, but it's bloody expensive. And it's like, who can actually afford uh, that sort of monthly investment? So when I partnered with Alan, you know, our commitment was to be somewhere in the middle, you know, be affordable so that uh, any, any, company who wanted to grow, who wanted to invest in marketing could afford us. But at the same time, we wanted to make sure that anything that we offered was essential and it would actually work. So that was the, uh, the opportunity that we saw in the marketplace. And so our approach is different in the sense that we don't just want to build you stuff. You know, we don't want to just build your website or, you know, just do a few posts on, on Facebook. It doesn't do anything for us. It might not even do anything for you. Our approach is really about creating a blueprint for success, creating a plan, having a, a, a map uh, well thought out. So one of the things that really sets us apart is that we do this uh, in-depth strategy session with you in the beginning to really learn about you, learn about your business, put a plan together, and then we'll go out and build you some stuff, whatever tools you need. But anything that we build you is going to be based on the plan that we put together. So we put the plan first, then we build all the things around it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about marketing and you know what is marketing? Well, everything is marketing if you think about it. The way uh, your website looks, your logo, the way you answer your phone. So, you know, one of the things that I see a lot is uh, you know, the business owner who's busy and, and he answers his phone in the middle of doing something else and it's like he picks it up in the fifth ring and then it's like, you know, and you can tell the guy's driving and then he's like, can I help you? And is that marketing? Sure. That's a representation of your brand, right? Everything is either moving that next customer towards you or away from you. So if we start looking at how you do everything in your business, now we can truly start to understand the power of marketing. And so we need to ask ourselves, are we really putting our best foot forward? because everything is marketing. And so the other thing that we can't forget as business owners is that the purpose of marketing is to create a response, to get people to take action, action of some sort. And hopefully that action is to get them to buy something or maybe to get them to call you. We don't want to fall in love with just what we call, you know, vanity metrics, okay? So things like likes and followers and shares and tweets and things like that. I mean, those things are great, but again, they're vanity metrics. You can't really take followers and shares and forwards to the bank. So ultimately the response that we wanna get is we wanna get people spending money in our, com in our company. And the first way to do that is through marketing. So in order to be successful in marketing, it really starts off with our own mindset. And you know what I have found coaching a lot of business owners is that uh, from the very beginning, before we even start implementing any marketing strategies, I have to understand what's their mindset like when it comes to marketing. So let me give you some examples. You know, if you see marketing simply as a cost, right? Like if it's just a cost, it's just an expense, you don't see it as an investment, then that right there tells me that your mindset is going to be a little bit defensive. You're always going to be looking to cut or eliminate your marketing expense. And that also tells me that you're doing marketing wrong, because if you're doing marketing the right way, then you should want to increase your spending, right? For, because marketing done the right way means that for every dollar you put in, you're going to get three back. So the reality is you shouldn't be looking to cut your marketing. You should be looking to increase your marketing if you're doing it the right way. Okay, so there's the second point. The third one here is you pay for marketing with time and not money. And, you know, what I mean by that is you went to law school or you went to medical school or you went to a trade school and you're really good at something, but you decide to build your own website. No, don't do that. You know, it ends up taking longer. It doesn't look as, as good. And, uh, you know, so you're essentially trying to DIY everything. And, and in the end, it takes longer and it's, it's not as effective. The other thing, too, is, is when you're looking for an instant return on investment for marketing, the reality of marketing is that marketing 
it, it's more of an art form than a science. And it takes time. And depending on what marketing strategy you're pursuing, it may take anywhere from three to six months to get something working for you. So when people say to me, okay, I think I'll try marketing for a month. That right there tells me that they're not in it for the long run, that they're going to you know, try a few things, throw some spaghetti up on the wall, and then they're going to jump out and they're going to quit and they're going to go, see, marketing doesn't work. And it's like, no, you didn't stick around long enough for it to work or you didn't do it the right way. But if you stick around long enough and you do it the right way, marketing will work. And one way we know that for a fact is people are still doing marketing, right? So if there's other companies doing marketing successfully out there, it means that there is a way to do it the right way. And then the last one here, and this was, you know, catastrophic for many, many businesses this year. There has been so many businesses that have disappeared this year, uh, mainly because of COVID. And I've been busier than ever this year working with all types of businesses. And what I have found is the businesses that relied on word of mouth were the ones that disappeared because people weren't talking to other people, people weren't going networking. I mean, there was, there's, there's a lot less word of mouth happening this year. And so if your only marketing strategy was word of mouth and waiting for a referral to come in, that's dangerous because that is all uh, reactive. It's not proactive. You can't essentially create you know, word of mouth. You can't force people to talk about you. You can't really encourage referrals. So if you had no other marketing strategies going on, you're really putting yourself in a dangerous situation because you're relying and expecting and hoping for those to come in, but you're not really being proactive about your marketing. The other thing that, that's interesting about marketing is uh, when a business owner contacts me or Alan and they're like, hey guys, you know, you, we need help with marketing. We need more leads. My marketing is not there. It's not existent. It's not working. You know, one of my first questions to them is like, well, how much learning have you done around marketing? How many books have you read? How many workshops or seminars have you got coached around marketing? And most of them go, no, 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 no. It's like, so how do you expect to get better results if you're not learning more? If you haven't dove into and actually learned marketing, then you know, you, you can't really expect to excel in marketing. So either you're going to do the learning and you're going to learn about meta tags and search engine optimization, geofencing and geotargeting and algorithms, or you just hire people who already did the learning and let them do the work for you. The other part of it is how much are you investing in marketing? The Small Business Administration here in the U.S. recommends that a small business should invest somewhere between 5 to 8% of gross sales back into marketing. So what I want you to do is kind of think about what you're grossing per month and are you investing at least 5 to 8%. Because at the end of the day, the purpose of investing in marketing is we're buying customers. And so if you don't have as much customers as you want, essentially what that tells me is you haven't done the legwork or you haven't invested enough to buy enough customers for you. Right? So make sure that you've set aside enough of a budget to bring in the amount of new customers that you're looking for. The other part that's really critical is Sometimes I see business owners doing one or the other, but not both, right? I see business owners who are all strategy. You know, they have like, you know, the game plan. They're, they're so organized. They got binders. They got this. They got that. Uh, but there isn't the action that's taking place. They're, maybe they're doing a lot of learning, but they're not applying. Uh, they're not executing on all the things that they know they should be doing. Or then you got the other extreme is the business owner who's just doing, 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 doing spaghetti up on the wall, running around doing 15 different things, but none of them are really working. So what's the solution? You kind of need both. You need, to, you need to have both. And I actually prefer quality over quantity. I rather you have three strategies that are producing and working really well for you than 15 half built bridges that aren't getting you anywhere. Okay, so strategy and actions is the way to go. The other thing too is, you know, is it in writing? Is that game plan in writing or is it just in your head? Like, oh yeah, it's all here. Like if you, and you wonder why you can't sleep well at night. Well, you can't sleep well at night because all your whole game plan for your, your business success for the next 10 years is all in your head. Trust me, the moment you get it down in writing, you'll sleep like a baby. Why? Because you, you don't have to leave it to memory or to chance. It's, it's there. Right. So one of the things that I'm actually working on right now with all my clients and several of you are my clients on the call is, you know, that right now we're working on creating a 2021 business plan. We're putting that in writing. 
right now we're working on a 2021 marketing plan. We're setting goals. Uh, we're creating strategies and tactics. All of these things are critical. They need to be in writing. It's been proven scientifically time and time again that people who write down goals and have a written plan constantly outperform those that don't, right? And I love when I get the question of like, well, Juan, I've been in business for 20 years and I've done just fine. Then I reply to them, imagine how you would have done had you put it in writing. Like you would have done tremendous, right? So that's the key there. So are you keeping score? We need to build a dashboard for our business. In business lingo, we call those key performance indicators. We need to know what numbers to look at. Most business owners just look at how much money came in and how much money came out. And that's just simply not enough. You have to know what led to those numbers because revenue is actually an outcome of something else. Revenue is the outcome of marketing times sales equals revenue. So knowing where you are is good, but knowing how you got there is even more important. And so what numbers, what should be on your dashboard? Well, you should be looking at your marketing spend and your return on investment from marketing, you should know what's working and what's not. And by having key performance indicators in your business, it, you'll know what's working and what's not working in your business. How many leads do you receive each month? See, if you're not tracking that on a month to month basis, then how do you actually know if your marketing is getting better, getting worse or staying stagnant? Yeah, the, the only way to know that is if you're tracking that month to month. What percentage of your leads do you actually convert? I see it time and time again, where people think they convert actually much better than they really do. Once we start tracking, they're like, gosh, I thought I was better at sales. I thought I, would, I was converting a lot more than I, I really am. Cost per lead, how much is it costing you to add a new customer or, or, or to generate a new lead in your business? These are all different examples of what you should be looking at, what, what numbers and metrics you should know in your business, okay? Customer acquisition, your, the value of the average customer, the lifetime value, all really, really important metrics. So have you done your research? Marketing, a big part of marketing is actually research. You got to know your prospects. You got to know your customers. You have to know your competitors. Oh my gosh, you know, I, I hear this all the time. You know, I actually ask that question. Who's your top competitor? I don't know. And if you do know, it's like, okay, what do, what do they do better than you? I don't know. What do they charge? What do you do better than them? See, if you don't know your competitor, if you don't know who you're in competition with, how are you going to beat them? Right? How do you win the game when you don't know your opponent or you don't know what they're good at, what they're not good at? And then you have to know yourself. You have to know your own strengths and weaknesses so that you can play the game better and so that you can improve your business. So what's your plan? You know, one of the things that we talk a lot, a lot about in, um, in, in, you know, the stuff that I do with my clients is uh, we talk about the ladder of loyalty, which is there's, there's different types of customers. Not all customers are built the same. So everybody starts off as either a suspect or prospect, and then they move up to being a shopper, and then they're a frequent customer, and then you enroll them to being a member, and then they become an advocate. And advocates like the people who are like your best customers. And then eventually the goal is to move everybody up this ladder and making them a raving fan. A raving fan is basically somebody who does all the selling for you, sends you a ton of referrals. I mean, they're leaving reviews on Google's how wonderful you are. And so when we're talking about marketing, you shouldn't have a, a marketing plan to just bring in new customers. You should also have a marketing plan to move people through the ladder up into becoming raving fans. That's a very big distinction there. So if you wanna be more effective in marketing, you, you, you gotta like focus in, you gotta like zoom in and you gotta look at the nitty gritty. You gotta look at the details because as they say, the devil is in the details. And it's really seeing marketing for what it is. And so one of the things that I learned early on uh, being a, a student of marketing and sales for big, very successful companies is that you should sell the benefits, not the features, okay? So when we talk about that, the, the feature is what something is, the benefit is what it does. That's a very big distinction, okay? So if you wanna get better at sales, like memorize this. If you wanna get better at marketing, 
memorize this. This is really, really key, really important. So let me give you some examples. If you're trying to sell, uh, what is this, an iPod? Is that what this was? Uh, like imagine you would walk around going, hey, would you like to buy storage for one gigabyte, you know, one gigabyte of storage for MP3s? If you did that 10 or 15 years ago, people would go, I have no idea what you just said. No, I don't want to buy that. But what if you said to someone, hey, you want to buy a device where you can put a thousand songs in your pocket? People go, yeah, how much is it? All right. So it's all about what it does, not what it is. OK, same thing with Diet Coke. If you said to somebody, hey, you want to buy a low calorie drink? No. But if you say to somebody, hey, you want to buy a drink where you're going to look better and like be the badass and, you know, everywhere you go, then the person would go, yeah, I want that drink. Right. So, again, sell the benefit not necessarily what it is. Now, my favorite example is good old Popeye here, right? So if you're trying to sell spinach, guys, don't talk about spinach because, you know, spinach is okay, but it's not the most delicious thing in the world. So if you're trying to sell spinach, don't talk about spinach. Talk about who you become because you eat spinach. Talk about the benefit and the result of that, okay? So time and time again, I see people talking about the product not the result or the benefit of your product or service. Really big distinction. And I learned that really well working at the Ritz-Carlton. You know, you, you pay $1,000 for a room, you pay $150 for a steak, uh, you pay $50 a night for parking. You know, you can't compete. If you're trying to sell based on price, you're not going to win because there's always going to be somebody cheaper than you. So what we did, and we had to be really good at it, is we had to sell the experience, the experience you would have when you stay at a Ritz-Carlton. So maybe you need to sell the experience. Maybe you need to market the prestige, right? How do you sell a Rolex? Well, what does a Rolex do? It tells time. That's it. it you can do that for with a $5 watch, right? Same thing with the Rolls Royce. What does it do? It gets you from point A to point B. So, but the experience is very different. The prestige of, of, of riding around in that car, having that, that watch on your wrist, that's what you need to sell, right? When, when we look at a security device, what are we actually selling? You know, whether it's a security device or insurance, we don't sell insurance. You sell peace of mind. You sell security. You, you sell safety. You, you sell common sense. You don't sell insurance, right? Really, really different. Now, here's my favorite one here. Uh, for any of you have, who have kids or young kids, a few years ago, there was this big fad with uh, slime. Every kid was making slime using Elmer's glue. I, I swear to you, you could not go to a Walmart and find glue. You could not find glue. And it, glue was sold out. They sold out more than ever. And it was all because kids figured out that you could make slime using glue. So here's the thing. If you're Elmer's glue, eventually you're going to run out of way, you know, things to talk about that of things you can glue together. But now they like, now they talk about all the different things that you can do with the chemical that glue is same thing with Heinz ketchup or any sort of ketchup, you know, eventually, you know, you can, you, you stop talking about the tomatoes and you start talking about the recipes that you can make using ketchup. Right, so maybe you sell the idea of what people can do with your product or service. Remember that the goal for marketing is you want people to take action. And how you get them to do that is make them realize that they have a problem in which you have a solution for. And you have to move people through a series of emotions, you know, pain and dissatisfaction. Then you got to get them excited about the vision, the possibility, and you got to create certainty in what you do. Because if people don't believe that you can solve their problem, then they won't purchase your product or service. And you achieve that through visibility, through credibility, reliability, and simplicity. If, you, if your marketing and your sales process has all of these things in it, then you're going to have much greater success because it's going to become so clear so apparent for people that they'd be crazy to not work with you. And here's the best piece of advice, guys, and I touched on this earlier, is, you know, don't be the person who tries to DIY everything. You know, I, I always say that if you go on, on YouTube, there's videos on how to do brain surgery on YouTube. 
just because you can find a video or an article doesn't mean you should try and do it yourself, right? I don't recommend brain surgery on yourself or on other people if you're not a doctor. And I also don't recommend trying to do things on your own, but people do it all the time. And if you did, think about it. How did it turn out? How did that work out for you? How long did it take? What did it actually cost you to try to DIY everything, right? So we want to pay for things with money, not with time, because ultimately money we can get back, time we cannot. That's my best piece of advice uh, to you is to really use uh, money and not time to grow your business, right? It's, it's a very big difference there. All right, guys, that wraps up my presentation there. And I'm going to turn it over to my partner in crime here, Mr. Alan Levin, to take you through the actual strategies uh, going into 2021. Alan's all yours. Thanks, Juan. Great presentation. Appreciate it. So I'm going to share my screen now. Um, let's, uh, all right. All right. So in case most of you know me here, but in case you don't, um, quick background on me, uh, born and raised in South Florida, been in digital marketing now for almost, uh, almost 10 years now. So I got to update that. Um, my background is uh, started my career with the Miami Dolphins in, in marketing. Um, then I transitioned over to Comcast. And then before I started um, this company, Smarty Pants with Juan, um, I was at Breakthrough Beverage working with uh, liquor and wine brands like Jack Daniels, Jose Cuervo, all the fun stuff. Um, and I have experience working with a lot of big brands. I've worked with professional athletes and, of course, plenty of small businesses from lawyers to insurance agents to pest control, you name it. And then Juan and I started the company now, yeah, about three years ago. And, um, you know, the rest is history. Um, so, you know, why are you here today? Obviously to learn from Juan and I, and, you know, you're taking time out on your Friday to, to get some good learning, but you know, the biggest complaint I hear from when I talk to businesses about their marketing is that marketing hasn't worked for them in the past. You know, they're kind of weary of it. Um, you know, they know they need to do it, but it just hasn't worked for them. Or maybe, Hey, you know, at 2021 coming up, you got to increase your business opportunities online with, you know, COVID here, everyone is shifting, you know, to on to an online presence and you know, you need that, but you just don't know where to get started. You know, there, it's kind of overwhelming sometimes, um, you know, how many platforms there are and how many different options there are when it comes to digital marketing. So, um, I'm sure some of these resonate with you. Um, so make sure to stay to the end so we can kind of show you um, what we offer and make sure that you get all the, you know, all the learning uh, from this as well. So, um, you know, I think, you know, Juan touched on this a little bit, but what I find is a lot of people are so quick to, when it comes to their marketing, is just talk about their product or, you know, be very salesy. Um, and when you're, when you're trying to appeal to a cold audience, that, that's not the way to, to do this, right? You have to have an emotional side of things, right? You know, if you're a weight loss company, it's not necessarily that you're going to lose 20 pounds. That's the appealing part. It's, hey, you're going to fit in those jeans that you haven't fit in in 10 years, or you're going to be able to play with your kids a little bit more better, right? So it's all about appealing to the emotional side of consumers. And you know, we can do that now with social media and Google. It's a great way to, you know, attract a cold audience, potential new clients. And I'm going to, you know, uh, show you that today. So everyone here has heard of Facebook and Instagram and Google, but, you know, maybe you don't believe in it or you don't, you know, you don't understand it and it can be overwhelming, but I just want to give you some kind of key stats. Um, 52% of all online purchases last year were made on Facebook. So of course, Amazon and all these other ones are big, but people do make purchases and purchase decisions directly from Facebook and Facebook advertising. 82% um, of the 1849 demographic is on Facebook. So, you know, pretty much everyone is on Facebook at this point. There's over, you know, 2 billion or three, actually, I think it's close to 3 billion global users now. And there's over 2 billion monthly searches made for businesses on Facebook on a monthly basis. So in effect, Facebook has become its own search engine. People are looking for reviews. They're looking for companies. They're looking for products and services on Facebook. And just some other, you know, kind of key stats. Um, if a business spends $1 on Google, you can expect $2 in return. So there's a great ROI on Google and Facebook. Um, mobile phones, the, the, the conversion rate has increased to 64%. So it's very, very important to make sure that everything you do is optimized for a smaller screen, you know, your cell phone, iPad, things like that. 
Um, so, you know, the, here's some key stats and we'll send this out after, but one other one I love is that out of five, at least four businesses go for Google ads for PPC campaigns. So that means four out of five businesses right now are using Google, which shows, you know, your competition is on there. So you want to, you know, do, you want to make sure that you can, you know, do better than they're doing on Google. And we're going to tell you some of these strategies today. All right. So right now, I think, you know, before I dive in everything, it's more than ever, it's more important than ever to get your digital house in order, right? You want to stay top of mind with your, with your customers. You know, you want to be consistent with posting on social media, updating your website, having blogs, you know, trying new things, maybe like Facebook live, Instagram live, podcasting. How can you provide value to your customers? And, you know, like I said, it's not all about sales, right? It's about showing value. You. So, you know, can you put together a checklist? Can you put together some sort of lead magnet, a blog post that will really give value to, to your potential, you know, audience? Um, yeah. And, and of course, make sure that you have everything together. Do you have, uh, you know, a Rolodex of photos? Um, do you have any videos? Do you have marketing materials that you could put out there? So you're not only just using stock imagery or you're only, you know, just doing text only kind of post. You want to make sure that you have some good collateral um, as we head into 2021. Um, and over since the pandemic started, these have been the top four platforms, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and WhatsApp. I'm going to focus specifically on Facebook and Instagram today, but it shows you, I mean, these have gained traction over the last eight months with people being home and quarantined and whatnot. Facebook and Instagram's usage has increased dramatically uh, on a weekly basis. So if you're going to be doing, you know, advertising and things like that, there's more likely a chance that people will see you now just with the increased usage um, on these platforms. So before I get into some of the strategies, you know, I have a lot of clients that say they're a little confused for content. You know, what, what do we talk about? What do I do? You know, obviously you can talk about your, your products and services, but people don't care about that right away. Right? So can you share motivational quotes? Can you share funny content? It doesn't always have to be about your industry. People like to resonate uh, with funny content. That's why you see cats and dogs and all that type of stuff on their content. Right? But the biggest thing I think that, you know, you could do when I always, I always go back to providing value. What are, what are 10 questions you always get asked in your industry? If you can't think of anything, you're not creative. Just go back to that. What kind of questions can you answer? What are the most frequently asked questions in your industry? And if you don't even know that, there's a great website that I love called answerthepublic.com. It's free. And you, you can type in any keyword, plumbing, you know, workspaces, whatever it is, and you could see what right now in real time are the most asked questions about that topic. It will give you the, the who's, the what's, the where's, the when's, what people are asking on Google right now. So you can go ahead and answer those questions with a video, with a blog post. And that's a great way to share content that's you know, valuable and insightful. Um, but generally I have the three main tips I have for content is value. We've already kind of you know, beat a dead horse with that. Uh, you know, post to establish community, right? Can you show the human side of your business? Maybe someone got a promotion in your company or it's someone's birthday or whatever you can do to kind of just show the human side of your company. You're not just a business, right? There's humans behind that running it. Um, are there, you know, any community events that you could share that you're a part of or proud of, right? And then of course you, you do want to share promotions and special offers. You know, it's holiday right now, holiday season right now. If you do have any discounts, specials, promotions, and gift cards, things like that, of course, share that over. Now more than ever, people are going to be making those purchase decisions. Um, so how, how have you, you know, just in the chat box, do you have um, any special content, any special promotions that you're sharing right now? And, and how are you doing that? Are you putting that on your Facebook and your Instagram and whatnot? Okay. Then one other thing about content is, you know, if you don't want to post on your wall or your, you know, your page daily, you know, a great uh, avenue now is stories. So Facebook and Instagram, I'm sure you've seen this. When you log on, it's those little circles that appear at the top and they're stories that basically just appear for 24 hours and then they go away. So they're not permanent. They don't live there forever, but it's a great way to, you know, share quick updates 
promotions, products, things like that, little, just little updates about your company. And on average right now, stories are getting seen about twice as much as just the normal posts that appear in your newsfeed, right? So stories are a great way to attract people and to see your content. And they kind of glow, uh, like on Facebook, they glow like a purple color and on, on, on Instagram as well. So they, they're just very, they catch the eye. So I definitely recommend using stories as part of your content strategy. Um, so now let, let's get into why the strategies that I really recommend employing when it comes to these social media platforms. So you may or may not know this, but Facebook, Instagram, all these platforms have an algorithm in place. So if, if you have, let's say, 100 followers on your Facebook page or your Instagram and you put out a post and you see, hey, like only six people liked it or only you know, I'd only reached 15 people and you're like, why? I have 100 fans. I have 100 followers. Well, that's because Facebook and Instagram have an algorithm in place that basically limits the amount of reach that you have. And that's because they want you to spend money on advertising. So you can even look, go to Nike, for example, their page, they have 90 million followers. But if you look at any given post, only about, you know, a million people like any given post. And I know a million is a lot of people, but that shows that 89 million people are probably not even seeing that post. So generally the rule of thumb is about one to 10% of your fan base or your followers will actually see any given post. And that's because Facebook limits the reach. So you really don't have a great opportunity with organic content to reach a lot of people. So you got to invest some money in advertising strategies on Facebook and Instagram. And I'm going to give you some simple ones that you can do that don't take a ton of technical, technical expertise. Now, I'd still recommend you use a company like us to, you know, to kind of deploy these because we have a lot of um, you know, more in-depth strategies to, to make them more effective. But these are things you could do right now that, you know, you don't need to have years and years of experience to do, right? So let's talk about social advertising. You know, in the chat box, just tell me, have you ever invested in Facebook ads and have you seen an ROI? So I get a lot of complaints. Well, well, well my ads don't work. I, I did a boosted post and nothing happened. Well, here's some of the reasons commonly why ads fail. You invested in a boosted post. Facebook tries to entice you. They'll say, hey, boost this post and you'll reach 500 more people. And it sounds easy and enticing, but it's a very unsophisticated form of Facebook advertising. Um, you know, it, it, it's generally only revolving around getting more likes, comments, and shares, which as Juan alluded to earlier, is a kind of a vanity metric, right? So another thing is people choose the wrong objective. You know, they'll choose like a boosting post instead of lead generation. Your call to action isn't clear. Do you have, what are you saying? Are you saying learn more, visit my website, call me, email me? What is your, would, do you have a, a, an effective call to action? You didn't split test. You only tried one ad and that was it. One photo, one line of copy and didn't try anything else. Well, no, other, other photos or videos or other ways of saying things may work more effectively than the one you tried. This is the big one. Your website and your ads aren't aligned. You know, you're, your ad says a uh, free consultation, but on your website, it doesn't say that anywhere. And you send people to your website and they get confused. Well, it said free consultation. Are they bait and switching me here? Right. Um, you didn't, you didn't use a good budget or, or give it enough time. That's a very, very common thing that I see happen. And then you're not really analyzing your performance and you're kind of just giving up after a couple of different ads. Um, this is a very common problem as well. So these are all things that, you know, you need to look at when you're, when you're doing any Facebook or social media advertising. Okay, so why do, why do I love Facebook ads? Why do I, I, I talk them up so much? Well, the targeting is so robust. If you tell me, hey, Alan, my ideal client is 35-year-old female that's a mother of two that is you know, fairly affluent, we can reach that on Facebook. You could target by income level, age, gender, family size, interest, purchase behavior, people that use Amazon purchase, uh, go on Amazon and make purchases a lot any type of interest, sports, business, whatever the case may be. Um, if you're, you need to target homeowners, you could do that. Facebook has this robust targeting option that really make it real. You can narrow down to your, your niche client, or you can make cast a very wide net. Uh, so it's really, really effective. Um, and it's, I highly recommend it. 
And if you ever want to kind of peep out what your competition is doing, Facebook offers this new thing. Now, if you go to any page in the world, any page in the world, you just go to their business page and look on the top right there. See where it says page transparency. I have it highlighted in red. If you click that, you can see any of your competitors ads if they're running them. So it will show you what they're saying, what their call to action is, what photos they're using. It won't tell you how much money they're spending or anything like that, but it will give you a great idea of how they're advertising. So you can get some great competitive and you know research and intelligence on what your competition is doing and see how you can do it better than them. So I, I would recommend recommend that if you know if you're if you're a, a divorce lawyer or a lawyer look at what other lawyers are doing in the area see what kind of ads they're running and also see what the big boys are doing like I use Geico as an example here so if you're in insurance why not see what Geico and Allstate and all these big firms are doing and you know they're obviously doing well so you could see you know kind of glean some great information from that so let's get into the top campaigns that you could start right now my number one suggestion is lead generation. So if you're creating a Facebook campaign, here's the, there's about 12 different campaign objectives or campaign options. Um, you know, you could see everything from brand awareness to web traffic, but a great one is lead generation. And I'm gonna go over the benefits and the kind of disadvantages of each. So the highlights are, you know, you pick your targeting, uh, who you want to target, you pick, you, you make a, you know, a photo, text, video, whatever the case may be. And then basically what you're doing is you're asking people to fill out a form on Facebook and you can customize the fields in the form, meaning name, asking for people's name, email address, phone number, um, zip code, address, whatever you want it to say. The great thing about this is, let's say you don't have a website or your website, you're not that confident in your website. This is the perfect type of campaign for you because they don't actually leave Facebook in this campaign. When they click on your call to action, such as claim offer, learn more, whatever it is, a, a form just pops up right on Facebook with asking for their name and email address and whatever. So you don't need to actually have a website at all. So this is very, very simple entry point for you to do a lead generation campaign. Um, you know, it's great for people claiming offers. It's great for getting leads. It's great for growing your email list. Highly, highly recommend it. The downfall is that the leads aren't always the best quality. You're going to get some pretty inexpensive leads, but because they didn't have to take any extra steps, such as going to your website, you're not really qualifying them as much. So I, I found that there'll be, you know, a small percentage of the leads that will just be, you know, they just kind of filled out the form just to see, you know, what it was, or they, you know, they weren't necessarily the, the best, uh, you know, lead for you, but still a, a, a very, very strong campaign to generate leads. And you could do this. All you have to do is fill out your targeting, put in your uh, creative, like a photo and text, and you can get this going. You don't need a website. You really don't need much knowledge after that. The next campaign, uh, this is a, here's an example of a, a great lead generation campaign. So as you see, like I said, there's text, there's a photo. This is a, a um, you know, a restoration company that was giving away a free kitchen upgrade. So as you can see, there's a little learn more button. If you were to click that learn more button, a form would pop up right on Facebook where you fill out your, where the, where the lead fills out their contact information. So pretty simple to do and effective. The next thing is, this is a little bit more sophisticated. This is called a conversion campaign. Now, in this scenario, you do need a website. You need a, a highly effective website. Um, but here, same thing. You pick your targeting, you pick your creative, and you're sending people to your website for a custom action. So that could be to fill out a form on your website. That could be to, a, a, the click to call button on your website. Um, it could be, let's say you're an e-commerce website and you sell t-shirts or whatever the case may be, you can actually directly send people to make purchases uh, on, on, your, on, your, on your website. So in this scenario, you do need a, a little piece of code called a Facebook pixel installed on your website, which will track all of the people that visited your website. So it's very, very effective because you'll know what pages people went to on your website, how much time they spent on your website. In this scenario, you're going to get extremely high quality leads and you're going to generate an ROI. The downside is you do need a, you do need a, uh, you know, a sophisticated website and sophisticated branding and the leads tend to be a little bit more expensive just because they are, uh, you know, higher quality. So that's called a conversion campaign. You know, that's something that'll be a little tougher to do uh, if, on your first time but it is something that is very, very effective. Uh, we do this for our clients now and we generate them, you know, really high quality leads that generally end up, you know, doing some business with them. 
The next campaign is retargeting. How many of you have looked at a shoe, a purse, a wallet, whatever the case may be on Amazon, and then let's say you don't make that purchase, you just kind of look at it, or it could be any product, and then all of a sudden it follows you, right? It's in your email, it's, it, it's when you're scrolling through Facebook, you see it, you're scrolling through Instagram, you see it, you're like, how did they, I just clicked on that, how do they know, <laughs> how do they know? Well, that's called retargeting. What retargeting does, it, it tracks the, the websites that you go to, and then it's able to know what you did. If you just, if you made a purchase or you just kind of clicked on it and then never looked at it again, well, they'll retarget specifically to you saying, Hey, finish this purchase and we'll give you 5% off or something like that. And the reason why this is so effective is because 90% of first time website visitors will leave without making any conversion, meaning they won't fill out the form on your website. They won't make a purchase. They won't give you a phone call. So you really want to retarget them, right? And that's where that Facebook pixel code is so effective or your Google analytics code is so uh, effective because you can actually specifically send an ad just to people that have visited your website in the past. So if you had a thousand visitors last month, you can send an ad just to those 1000 people and no one else with like a special offer like, hey, we know you've uh, visited our website. Um, why don't you make a purchase uh, with here's a 5% off to finish the purchase or here's a free consultation since you are familiar with our brand, right? So retargeting is an extremely effective campaign um, to, to, to really generate new business. How many of you have seen retargeting? How many of you have seen a product has followed you around? You've wondered how that happened. Just type yes or no in, in the chat bot, chat box, excuse me. Uh, now let's, let's transition over to Google. Um, Google is the largest search engine in the world, right? Uh, you know, it, right now it accounts for over 80% of all global search traffic. So the very first entry point, and it's super easy. Any of you can do this with zero marketing experience. You need to create your Google, my business listing. How many of you have a Google, my business and what a Google, my business is, is anytime you search any company restaurant, doesn't matter what it is. It's that little thing that appears on the right hand side of Google that shows their reviews. It show, it's a gateway to your website. It shows photos. It shows your address. I'm sure all of you have seen this. Anytime you're looking up a place, generally most businesses have this. And on average right now, your Google My Business is getting four times the amount of views of your website. So if you don't have a Google My Business, you need to do it and it's completely free. All you do is go to google.com slash business and you can claim your Google My Business listing. If you don't know if you have one, quite simply, go on Google and search your business name. If you don't see this little picture here with your name and, and whatnot, then you don't have one. And you can create one for yourself and Google will send you a postcard to your business address and you will be able to claim your listing. Highly, highly recommend it. It's a gateway to your website. You can put photos, you can put posts on here. It now has like a COVID-19 update section. If your hours have changed or, you know, something's changed about your business, you could put photos of your services, of your products. Uh, highly recommend doing this. So in the, in the chat, please put if you've actually uh, utilized Google My Business or if you have a Google My Business page. Give you a couple seconds there, but this is a highly, highly uh, effective strategy. Finally, is I'm sure most of you heard is Google Ads. You know, if you search any term, any any term, you'll, when you look, generally the first couple results at the very, very top are ads, and and you'll see here, right here, right under uh, where it says ad, you'll know if it's an ad if when it says ad there at the top. So the good the advantage of a Google pay per click ad is it appears at the very top of a, of a, of a search after someone searches a keyword. So um, similar to Facebook, you could target by keywords, interests, behaviors, gender, age, all that type of thing. And the great thing about it is Facebook, you're kind of going fishing for people, right? You're casting out a net, but on Google, people are searching what you offer. If you're a lawyer, people are searching lawyer and then they see your ad. So you know that people will be able to find you when you put an ad because people are searching those keywords. Um, you know, it's a great way to outrank your competitors. Maybe your competitors rank higher than you organically. So this is a way to, you know, get a little bit higher than them with an ad. Obviously, once you stop paying for that, it goes away. But while you have that ad running, uh, you'll be in front of your competitors if, if they're not running an ad. Um, you know, SEO or search engine optimization is a longer term play. It takes a while to get your rankings on Google high, but pay-per-click is fast. You can have an ad up and running within 24 hours and start getting clicks and calls and things like that. 
Um, what I love about it is, is the purchase intent. Like I said, on Facebook, you're, you're kind of doing the phishing, but on Google, people are searching these things. They're searching for SEO audit. They're searching for workspaces. They're searching for lawyers, right? So this is a great way to get right in front of them. And you have full control of, of how quickly the budget is spent, how much you're spending, um, you know, the, you know, all the different targeting, you have full control over it. So I really like that. And, you know, it's a great way, just similar to Facebook and Instagram, great way to get a, uh, you know, an ROI with conversions, people calling you and it will track all the phone calls you get from it. It'll track all the people that filled out a form on your website. So great way to receive an ROI. So have any of you guys used Google pay-per-click campaigns? Just put in the chat box if you have. And I'm not uh, going to skip that. And with that, Juan, why don't we take some questions? I know that was a lot of information. <laughs> um, would love to uh, spend some time answering some questions. And, and as we do that, um, as, a, as a bonus for you guys being on this call, uh, we are giving away kind of a free marketing review. So we'll look at the 10 key areas of your marketing from your Facebook to your social media advertising, to your SEO, to your websites. Um, you know, if your websites optimize everything, we'll take a look at it completely for free and do an audit and let you know what we think of your marketing. No obligation. You know, if you want to sign up for that, I have a link right here. It's a Calendly link, which I'll put in the chat. But with that, let, let's take some questions. Great job, Alan. Did we tell him that there was going to be a test at the end? Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be a test. Yeah. That, you can't that get the review unless you do the test. <laughs> yeah. No, that was great. And, uh, you know, like our promise is always to jam pack the, uh, the session with a lot of information. And, uh, I think we certainly did that today. So, uh, we'll take questions. We'll also take feedback. Um, what was your key learning from today? You know, what was the, the one thing that either you enjoyed learning the most or, What's one thing that you'll actually put into action because of today? So get those comments typed in because again, I love the fact that you guys showed up, but if you don't apply any of this stuff, uh, it's not going to bring you a return on investment of your time. So let's see what Alexa said here. Uh, for the retargeting campaign, how can you tell if most of the people going into the website are not your competitors? Yeah, no, that's, that's a, that's a good question. Um, fortunately you can't really decipher that, um, you know, going in, but you know, people that you can, the great thing is, is like with us, for example, Facebook retargeting is you can specify the amount of time. So let's say you want to retarget everyone that visited your website for the past 365 days or the past six months. I'm sure there's a reasonable chance that not every single one that's visited was a, was a competitor. Right. But unfortunately you can't, you know, it doesn't, Facebook won't give you, or any of these pro, pro platforms won't give you like the person's name or anything like that. So it's just, it just kind of uses their IP address. So you can't really eliminate, you know, possible competitors, but you can do things that will be more likely, um, you know, people with higher intent. There's some strategies you can use to get people that are actually taking higher intent. Maybe it's, you can target people that spend, let's say, at least 10 minutes on your website or at least 20 minutes on your website. I would think a competitor probably isn't doing that, right? So there, there's some things you can do to sort of filter it out, but not completely. Good question though. Yeah, and what's your concern with that, Alexa? Can I unmute myself? Sure, yeah, of course. Sorry, in the past when I've done the uh, Facebook campaign, you know, I didn't get a lot of um, traffic or I didn't, I did get some leads, but not enough, not too good. Maybe I was doing the, the lead generation, but it seemed to me that most of the people that were looking were just people that wanted to see what I was up to or what my pricing was. Because uh, we do, in my industry at least, we do uh, keep on, on top of what our competitors competitors are doing. So that's just a question, of course. Yeah, I think I should go to the retargeting, but I wanted to know what the difference was. Oh, Alan, you're muted. Yeah, no, that that's that happens, you know, there that happens uh, across all industries, competitors kind of, 
you know, scoping out your website and, and things like that. But, you know, retargeting doesn't just have to be based off website visitors, right? It can be based off of engagement on your Facebook page. If you did a video, you can actually target people that watched 75% of your video or 100% of your video. Anyone that's clicked an ad at the past on any of your ads, anyone that's um, liked, commented, or shared one of your posts. So I would think a competitor probably isn't going to like, comment, or share on your post. So there is other retargeting avenues that are outside of just previous website visitors. Although previous website visitors is generally the, the most effective one, but the other ones are still good as well. Yeah. Any more questions? I, I dropped the Calendly link in there if you want that free marketing review. It's right there. So you can copy and paste that link and fill out a time that is beneficial for you. Um, but we'd love, is there any more questions? We'd be happy to take them. Just put them in the chat yeah. box or even unmute yourself and, and ask. I have a question. It's Ramon here with Vixicom. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Um, I have actually two questions. Uh, first, I saw that when you posted the platforms, uh, the most used platforms were TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. But then I saw on the bottom, you had WhatsApp. Uh, my question would be basically, how do you, is it even possible to do marketing on WhatsApp since you mentioned it? And the second question was, do you guys also do uh, in-language uh, marketing help, uh, for example, to conquer the Hispanic market? So when you say in-language, so are you saying like ads that would be in Spanish or targeting people that are, are Hispanic or what, or what did you mean by that? No, no, no. There's, there, they are two separate questions. The first was... Uh, how do you even market in WhatsApp since you mentioned it, that the, they, were, they were marketing platforms and I saw WhatsApp in there. And then right. the other question, nothing related to that one, is that do you guys work with uh, Hispanic marketing uh, strategies? Right, right. Um, so WhatsApp, unfortunately, right now there actually is no... Um, they're, they're free of ads right now. Like they are, don't allow advertisers on their platform. Um, I put that on there just because, you know, just to show that that is one of the most used apps right now. Um, so unfortunately you don't really have like a, a, an advertising Avenue. However, they are considering getting into WhatsApp and uh, I'm sorry, into ads, which is why I put it on there because I, I'm, I'm a very big fan of becoming an early adopter of when advertising platforms you know, um, or when, when big social media platforms allow the, you know, advertising on there. So um, it could be a great way, a new market to explore. Right now, it, it is not something they're allowed, they're not allowing ads on there, okay. but it, it could happen in the future. As far as the Hispanic marketing, um, we've worked with companies um, that, that um, like, like we're working with one now that uh, is primarily based uh, over or in South America. And, um, you know, we've done certain ads for them, you know, on, on the great thing on Facebook and Instagram is you can target by language. So if you want to target Spanish speakers, um, you know, you can absolutely do that. And, uh, you know, as far as websites, we've added in functionality to switch languages. You know, there's a little like flag up top and it will switch to what language you want. Um, so we've done in that, and we've done ads um, from that perspective. So I don't know if, if that answers your question. <clears throat> well, I was, I was referring more into the Hispanics in USA, not, not South America or, or other countries. Okay, yeah, well then yes. Well, th th so one of our companies is overseas, but yes, we've had uh, ones in America that are specifically looking to target Hispanic people in the local area, for example, and we have done advertising on their behalf. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we can get everything uh, translated. That's not a problem. So, um, and I think the, the company that uh, Alan's referring to, that's our client, uh, I think it's originally a Chilean company, and uh, but they're operating here in the US as well. So the marketing that we're doing for them uh, essentially is, is here uh, for both the Hispanic and the American uh, clientele. Yeah, and we and we'll work with you too. I mean, we we ask you for some of the ad targeting. Like maybe there's like for example, one of the, one of the clients I've worked with that wants to target, you know, Spanish people actually in Orlando. They told me there's like certain zip codes in the Central Florida area that are very um, prevalent with Hispanic people. Um, you know, in that area, there's uh, so like they'll give us specific zip codes and things like that. Um, you know, and there's so many even interest based targeting on, on on Facebook and Instagram, right? Maybe it's 
you know, movies that are common, you know, that Spanish people are watching or things like that, or food or cuisine, things like that. There's a lot of way to, you know, pinpoint, you know, if you're trying to reach that market and we work with the client to, you know, learn more about your target demographic, things that you may know that we may not know upfront. And there's definitely a way to pinpoint, you know, a certain group of people. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Alan, we have a uh, question here from Jeannie. Uh, it says, uh, I've been receiving ads from a vendor on WhatsApp and don't appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, so that's interesting because uh, I, I think there's always going to be somebody who, who finds a way to, uh, to message because at the end of the day, it's a messaging app, right? So could people, you know, message you to death? I mean, you know, we're seeing that through MSS or uh, texts and uh, WhatsApp. And, and yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, if you didn't solicit that, it's spam, right? It's just like email, you know? Uh, so if, if somebody is emailing you and essentially you didn't provide them with your email address, you know, technically it's spam. So we want to make sure, you know, everything that we do is we want to make sure that we follow the law. And we also know that when you follow the law, it's actually more effective too. So, uh, you know, everything that we do is, is ethical and, and it's a lot more effective as well. But thanks for that, Jeannie. Yeah, the only thing I'll say actually, you know, going back to WhatsApp is that Facebook actually does own WhatsApp, just like they own Instagram. So there is some integration with Facebook and WhatsApp. So if you have a WhatsApp account and you connect, like when you start your account, you, it will ask you, do you want to sign up with an email address or do you want to sign up with your Facebook? If you do sign up with your Facebook account, there is some integration where an ad could find its way into it because you opted in that way. But like, it's not necessarily like an open option. Like on Facebook, when I was showing all those uh, types of campaigns, like lead generation conversion, there's not one that specifically says go to WhatsApp, but there is probably some loopholes where you could get into WhatsApp just because Facebook owns it. And they do have a lot of their uh, third party applications that they own. They will put placement on those. So there might be some ways that we could explore. Um, it's just not fully as open as a Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, things like that. And I think that was the last question or comment that we had. All right, great. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for attending. Happy, happy Friday. Have a great weekend. Like I said, if you want to fill out, if you want us to do a marketing audit and discuss some of these issues more, WhatsApp, Facebook, whatever, just do an audit. Feel free to sign up at that link below. And um, you know, we'll make sure to, to reach out to you and, and we'll get that done. Thank you for yeah. your time, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye. Bye.